Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 27 of Solar Civilization, and we start with a launch of the Triton 2, um, my newest reusable rocket. Talking of reusable rockets, very briefly, SpaceX has been um, selected to be the uh, one of the providers for manned orbital uh, manned launches to the International Space Station, so that's very cool. But anyway, moving on. Um, we're just, you know, doing a fairly standard launch. I'm actually launching a Keythane miner today, hopefully to go to the moon and search for Keythane, because um, I'm not entirely sure where the Keythane is, because I'm not fully sure the mod works. So this is just a probe thing. But anyway, we ditched that, and we decouple. Um, this is back into one times time accelerate, because that explodes. Um, I put a new launch... I, I'm using the same sort of landing structure for reusing the top stage as the... Um, Triton 1, but I kind of miscalculated and it kind of exploded. So, yeah. So this probably isn't going to be reused, and what I should have done um, is switch to that uh, main stage and tried to land that safely, but I didn't because I kind of wanted something to look cool right now. I really should have gone to that main stage and basically landed it to kind of minimize expenditures, but um, we could assume that the uh, the ground team would, uh, you know, do that. But, uh, yeah, basically I'm just going to point this and hopefully, uh, and see how strong those fairings are against re-entry heating. Because it uh, would be an interesting way of landing things on other planets, actually. Um, so this could serve as a test other than um, just... I could treat this not as a total failure, because um, if I could use this sort of thing to land on another planet... Um, and act as a heat shielding and then break off one of the fairings out of the heating and use the bottom fairing to fly, then it might be a good way of picking out my landing site. But um, I'm coming back pretty hard and pretty steep. So, hmm. Yeah, anyway, so the main stage falls away and I'm pointing retrograde. Um, there are, not retrograde, prograde. Um, there are multi, there are better ways of doing this, but and this wasn't really a test. This was just I kind of wanted to see it burn up. But it is an interesting way of using that bottom fairing as a wing I guess. Anyway, we start to gain re-entry heating, and it does heat up a lot, and it looks like it's pulling the fairings apart, and um, yeah, it's getting pretty hot, um, and then it rips apart, and completely breaks, and we're left with this probe. So that kind of sucks, because I was hoping to find Keithane in this episode, but I have other things going on, and um, I do want to occasionally leave launch failures in, because sometimes I just revert, but I this actually failed a lot of times. I tried it on the Triton 1, and because there were problems with that, it actually didn't do a perfect burn. Uh, didn't do a perfect launch trajectory. Ran out of fuel, so because this is basically the max payload for Triton 1. So I tried Triton 2, but because of the new um, structure for reusing the second stage, it kind of failed. And we lose the Keythane Miner. So that was a total failure. Anyway, on to better things. This is my new space plane. This is an SSTO to replace the space shuttle. Um, I have now updated to the new version of B9, which will actually mean eventually I'll have some cool um, futuristic interplanetary stuff, which would be quite nice, because I kind of regret not having Interstellar with this, because it would have made sense for the whole civilization thing. But um, the new uh, B9 engines, some of they actually have some kind of um, futuristic stuff in there. B9 has gotten a lot cooler. Scott Manley did a video, I'd check that out. But anyway, what I need to do right now is replace the shuttle, partly because um, the shuttle parts that I was using are now invalid and I can't be bothered to completely refigure that, and because we've moved past shuttle, we don't need it anymore, it, it's not fully reusable, it's not an amazing lifter, and I've flown it many times, and it's time to advance our technology because I want a fully and rapidly reusable method of getting to space that isn't um, a reusable rocket. Um, so this is the Aeronautical Division's um, answer, using rapier engines. I would, if I build a bigger one, I'd probably use the um, B9 um, Sabre engines, but uh, yeah, this is just using four rapier engines. And the problem with the rapier engines is they're very inefficient in space. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is called the S1 Raptor, as in SSTO-1, and its name is Raptor. Um, yeah, but this actually is in a very good spacecraft, and I reckon it could take more to orbit than um, Shuttle. Uh, because even though I did make Shuttle pretty good in the end, um, I reckon this could do better. Uh, it's a very nice way of getting to orbit. It's not one of those slow SSTOs, it's just freaking fast. But I'm using some nice B9 air intakes, um, the ones that look kind of like Skylon, and then a few radial ones. This is actually a pretty good spacecraft. It's got a ton of fuel. It has the same cargo bay as Shuttle. It is a little bigger, but it has bigger wings. It has, um, it has more balanced RCS um, and a different tailplane. But yeah, I'm thinking this could be a serious um, 
serious contender to take over from Shuttle. I did have a, some different ideas and I was going to do a smaller SSTO in this, but I've got some plans for an SSTO that doesn't use these rapier engines because when they're on, in orbit, they're not particularly efficient. Whereas if you use like a turbojet and then some smaller engines, that's way more efficient. Anyway, as you can see, I have sped this up because it is quite a long um, launch and I, um, you know, don't want to leave. I wanted to leave it all in because, you know, it's the first flight of this and I will be using kind of quite a bit. I want to do it. I want to use it for servicing the space station. Um, and this could be a crew vehicle as well because I did have some ideas for kind of smaller SSTOs, but I thought I might as well make some proper functional stuff. Um, and I'd like to see the max payload of this. Anyway, now into um, rocket engine mode. I'm just going to push my apoaps up. Um, now I'm going very fast sideways. That's how I like to get into orbit, rather than burning straight up and losing all my velocity, which is very inefficient. Because a lot of people, they get they switch to rocket mode and they just like burn straight up. That's not how you should do it. You should just kind of launch it almost like a rocket after you've got the main ascent done. Because you try and go as fast as you can with... Um, jet engines and there's no point um, losing all that velocity by burning directly upwards you kind of burn like a gravity turn I guess anyway we are now in orbit and I've slowed it down I'm not really doing anything I don't have any payload this was just a test flight I don't have any decent solar panels either I just have those few ones on the back which is enough but I'd like some um I still haven't unlocked RTGs I haven't done a I haven't done enough science this is episode 27 I don't have RTGs that is ridiculous anyway um <laughs> I will. I'll do some more science soon. I mean, we've got some. We've got an Eve mission coming up anyway. Well, on the way to Eve, and a Moho window coming up, and I'm planning on landing on Moho, and another Elu window. We've got tons of stuff about to kind of happen, so we'll have a large influx of science fairly soon, which would be nice. And I'm going to do. I have some plans for moon missions, and that kind of involves Keithane, which hasn't gone great this episode. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I need to deorbit this now because it doesn't have a huge amount of life support. I have a well, no, TAC life support updated itself. Um, I'm not sure how perfectly it's working, but it's 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 doing all right, so that's good. Um, I'd like to find a, a plugin for it that allows me to like create food because there's stuff that refines water and oxygen, but that just creates a load of waste, which makes it no better than just having more containers of like food. So I'm thinking it would be good to have something that would grow food as well and recycle waste, so I could have a self-sustaining base, so I don't have to keep sending missions. Um, this was a bad deorbit burn, actually, although it, it, it was weird because I put it down way, way too, um, way further east than I, um, would usually put it with, like, shuttle or any plane, basically, but, um, it's fine because, um, I, this has engines, but it end up, it, as you'll see, it goes pretty far past anyway because it has a huge amount of lift. Those wings are incredibly lift capable. Um, I'm not sure. I think they're bigger than the shuttle wings. Um, shuttle, was, my space shuttle was actually a very good spacecraft, but um, not a very good in aircraft because it was. It, you couldn't really return payload without completely replanning the tra trajectory, and this will be much better at returning payload, which is something that's quite important to me actually. Um, anyway, I don't have an action group to switch these, and I'm going to manually switch them. Um, I will on my next uh, my next flight of this make it much better. Um, get, have some action groups, have some better solar panels. Uh, yeah, so that should hopefully be quite good. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I haven't even used half of my fuel in this. I'm reckon, I reckon this could probably go out to the moon, uh, maybe Minmus, or it could just take a huge, it could take a really good spacecraft to orbit. I was really happy with this. Um, I think I was uh, originally using, planning to use six engines, but that's overpowered and it would have wasted a ton of fuel. So, well, more than a ton of fuel, I bet. <laughs> anyway, I've sped this up again because um, it's just a standard re-entry. Um, goes fairly well. This does have air brakes at the back tucked underneath those um, those kind of rudder wings. Um, those work quite well, but they do give me quite a bit of... They, when I activate them, they pitch up quite a bit, which isn't great. Um, but, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using the new B9 parts. They have a very nice UI inside now. They have tons of useful computers, actually. Um, and in addition, they have... Well, there's just a lot of new cool stuff in um, B9. They have a better engine system now. Uh, not engine, better fuel tank system now, which I really do like. Um, and you can build some really big crafts. If you haven't seen new B9, check out Scott Manley's channel or I think Enter Elysium. They did some cool videos where you just kind of... Um, you can build giant gigantic spacecrafts and have these big engines on them and I'm going to do some stuff with that because I want something cool for my uh, when I eventually go full on civilization um but yeah we're just kind of I I 
uh, tried to get some lift there and glide and it worked very well but now I'm going in way too fast and way too high so um, I'm going to go over the space center so I'm already activating those air bricks but I have to be careful because I don't want them to burn off because they're very useful on landing and I'm not brilliant at landing um, but uh, yeah so uh, air brakes tend to help and they are overpowered but ferrum aerospace does neuter them a bit and now I'm pulling a turn um, so that I can so that I can more easily turn around when I pass the space center and to increase my drag um, I'm not going to belly flop through the atmosphere because that doesn't go well with ferrum aerospace as um, you may know from many of my failures with my smaller SSTOs I find with ferrum aerospace now your SSTOs have to be quite big and bulky um, preferably made of B9 parts, because if you make them of lots of little parts, they just tear apart so easily. But this is a very durable space plane. Um, yeah, so I've got various plans for this. If it's capable enough, I might even use it for some um, some moon missions, or maybe taking a moon mission to space. Um, it would be quite a good transport system. I mean, there is a fuel station in orbit now, fuel station Alpha, um, which is just basically a big fuel tank and a few other things. So that could be quite useful for... Um, like refueling various spacecraft um, yeah I'm planning I have lots of plans for um, bases and it would have moved along a lot better today if I hadn't um, screwed up the keythane thing um, but yeah so next episode I hope I'll be launching a lot more keythane stuff and actually laying down bases places because I've been talking about that for 27 freaking episodes and there are no bases anywhere actually no there are two bases there's two in Kerbin orbit and I did have a temporary base on the moon but that kind of went to hell um, blame the government funding, that's what it was. Um, we had to retire this shuttle program, that's what it was. That was all the source of all our problems. Um, yeah, shuttle would have been too expensive for all of this and not capable enough. And we want a reusable method of going to space, and we kind of have one, but um, didn't work too great today. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, on our flight back I can talk a little bit more about um, NASA selecting SpaceX as their um, provider for taking astronauts to space because um, they've already taken cargo to the International Space Station for them but um, now they've selected um, Boeing Boeing and NASA to use their manned vehicles so Dragon Mark II and Boeing's vehicle I don't know much about that actually um, so yeah they'll hopefully be um, taking them to the space station which is cool because <clears throat> um, Dragon version 2 is a very revolutionary craft it has it actually lands on engines it does a lot of very cool stuff so um, that so you want to put as many as much funds as that into that as possible, and there's not a huge amount of funds outside of NASA for manned spacecraft. I mean, obviously SpaceX could put their own money into it, but it's quite expensive. And I mean, their margin, their profit. I, I wonder about their profit margins because their rockets are incredibly cheap, uh, much cheaper than everything else. So I, I do wonder how much money they actually make. Um, they have to be profitable, obviously. I mean, it's a business, but uh, you know, it's it's interesting. Anyway. Now we're coming back to the Space Center, and I just thought I'd take a quick look at this Fire Spitter UI. So there's the front camera, which is very cool. And then you've got various navigation things. I don't really have time to look at that. And there's also a docking camera, I noticed, um, which I will be using a lot, because I like the idea of docking from in the um, in the space plane hangar. I think that's very cool. Um, anyway, just taking a quick dive and lining up the runway. It'll slow down soon, so we can see my landing in real time. Um, just trying to judge where it's going to slow down fairly soon. Um, yeah, there we go. There, drop the landing, drop the landing gear, and um, just kind of line up perfectly with the runway, which I haven't done. And there we go, back into one times time accelerate. Um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty well lined up for the runway. I just need to apply a little bit of yaw control at the very end. Um, <clears throat> but I'm slightly to the left of the runway, so I'm going to have to do a little more gliding and hopefully not pass over the runway. And for some reason, my uh, preview windows dropped down to half resolution, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm crossing quite a lot of the runway, but I still have a lot left. I was going to land on the um, runway on the island, but I thought that would be foolish with an experimental spacecraft. Anyway, coming down quite hard and quite tilted, I lose that bottom engine, but uh, not bad, actually. Um, I, I'm just going to flip those two engines so they're kind of side by side as opposed to on top of each other so that I get less explosions on the runway. Anyway, I'm very pleased with that. That'll hopefully replace the space shuttle. Um, so yeah, and I'm just opening the cargo bay doors just because I didn't show you inside. Basically the same. Um, pretty much, this, yeah, it is basically the same format as the space shuttle. I've just basically outfitted it with some cool stuff. Um, anyway, 
Sorry, much editing there because Sony Vegas is being a huge dick, so I couldn't see what was going on. Anyway, as I was saying, we have something else going on, and this is the ETV M01 Kepler, um, which will be performing its burn, so it will actually encounter close to EVE. And this is sped up to four times time accelerate, but you can see how much it shakes around, um, because I didn't have 2.5 meter of docking ports at the time of building this. Anyway, warping ahead six days, because I have nothing else going on in that time. Um, right up until our maneuver node, um, and then I'll perform a quick burn. This is much, I think this is just generally much better than the um, EVE Explorer, not the EVE Explorer, the Duna Explorer, um, because the Duna, Duna, the Duna Explorer um, didn't have a science lab on it, didn't have a lander for um, uh, the moon, uh, Drez, uh, not Drez, fucking Ike, I don't know why I always get them confused. Anyway, we've started our burn. This uh, will be sending probes down to the surface of EVE, because it's very hard to get off of EVE, and I don't have the technology yet. Um, hopefully, I'll, maybe I will one day, um, depending on how good the B9 parts are. And yeah, and this fire spitter technology in here is very cool. There's lots of very cool stuff. I was just flicking through it, um, because I haven't really looked at it. That is part of the new B9 pack. They give you some awesome interiors. It's just, yeah, we have an orbital indicator there. You could really do a mission from IVA now. It would, I might. Um, do it, IVA mission, and there's a docking camera which I can't really activate right now because I'm not docking with anything. Not a brilliant nav ball as it turns out, but um, still pretty good and it's quite an advanced nav ball, it shows you where everything is when it's off of the nav ball. But yeah, this will be uh, sending two probes into EVE, um, one to the surface, <clears throat> to the to the ground and one to the oceans. Um, I don't have any cloud mods so I'll actually be able to see where that is, which is kind of a shame, I like the cloud mods, but I didn't want to change up the mods too much after I started. I do incidentally actually have Infernal Robotics installed now, but I haven't really used it. Anyway, that's in a good place, and it is time for me to say I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape, I will see you next time.